Okay, so you've decided you're going to build your computer. What's next? Do research. you got to figure out what you're going to buy. Okay? What I did when the computer died is I got online and started looking at specs, specifications, for video editing computers. Okay? And there's a website out there called Tom's Hardware Guide. It's been one of the premier websites for PC builders for a long time. There's some other ones, but that one came up when I did my first search. And on there, there was some part of the forum where people would post questions like, my budget is this, I want a video editing computer, what should I get? And then the computer nerds will come in and answer and say, well, get this processor, get this video card, get this. Here's where you buy them, and we come in at your price limit, okay? So I sat down and started looking at it and thinking, and I wanted to match what I had before. The last computer I built, the one six years ago, the videos are still on YouTube. I was watching some of them two days ago. I went high-end. I went the best I could afford. The only thing I didn't go high-end on was the video card, because... I have video card costs more than the computer in most cases, and I didn't feel I needed that extra 10 or 15% of performance that the extra $600 would cost. And as I'm reading the specs on all these different video editing computers, I started noticing that it was the same thing I would built six years ago. So that's basically what I decided to do, and I started looking at Intel's processors. I wanted Intel instead of AMD. I know more cores would eat up the video processing faster, but the high-end processors, Intel is still way above AMD. AMD's processors can't match it, even on their top end. They just can't. So I decided I was going to go that route. I'm going to pay a premium for that, but I went that route. So the next thing I did is started looking at what processors were available and what the price points were. Because there are, you start typing i7 Intel into Google and you type comparison chart, there are literally thousands of i7 processors. Intel makes a ton of them. Not all of them in production anymore, just a few of them in production at a time. And the older ones are basically you're going to find on eBay and they're salvaged from other computers and things like that. Now, I didn't want to go that route. I wanted something pretty current and recent. And I started looking and I found Skylark. So I bought an i7 Skylark, which I'm looking around the room because it's here in the room. I see it over there. I'm not going to grab it right now. Why am I talking about processor so much? Because that is the foundation you build the rest of the computer on. The motherboard and everything depend on that processor. Okay. If I were to go with an i5 processor, I have to get a different motherboard than the i7. Not 100% true because the processors have what they call sockets. And different sockets are on different motherboards. And different processors use different sockets. That's why when I'm upgrading a computer, I can't really use the old motherboard because the new processor may not fit it. I probably could have found a processor that fit the old motherboard, but I'm not sure what died in that computer. It's either the processor or the motherboard. One of the two. And I'm not going to spend $200 on a processor and find out that the motherboard's dead and spend another $200 on a motherboard when I didn't have to buy a processor. So I'm just replacing everything, especially because it's six years old. Okay? Now, once I got the processor, I went looking at motherboards to fit that socket. Okay? And a couple of different motherboards came up. There's three companies to make top quality motherboards. There's others. I know some of you are going to leave comments going, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I just didn't research that far. Okay. I went with what I'm familiar with. EVGA, Asus, Gigabyte. I know there's others. Okay. But these three I have good experience with and I want to stick with something I have experience with. Asus and Gigabyte have been around since, you know, Celeron Pentium days. Long, long time. EVGA has not been around as long as them, but they're known for building good quality stuff. They're pro- there's usually a premium on their stuff. So I went reading through video uh, motherboards, looking at features, looking at everything else, and I settled on my motherboard. We're going to go through all this stuff in a little bit, 
okay, one at a time. I'm going to review each one separately. Now, once I have the motherboard, I had to go video card. If I went with an i5 processor, I wouldn't want a top-end video card because information's going to choke from the processor to the video card. The video card would be a little wasted. Well, that was current thinking anyhow back when I built the, first, the computer six years ago. I'm pretty sure that really hasn't changed too much, okay? So if you go with a top-end video card, you better go with a top-end processor or you're going to have an information choke point on one of the two and you're not going to get the performance you have. I didn't go with the top-end video card. I went with one lower. So the video card might be choking the processor a little bit. But doubtful with the video card I went with. Then after that, you go to memory because the memory is dependent on the motherboard. You have DDR3, DDR4, DDR2, DDR1. Okay. The motherboard I purchased takes DDR4. Then I had to decide how much memory I want. Well, since I'm doing video editing, I want a lot of memory. And I like to have a lot of different things open all the time. So I went with 32 gigs of memory. I can go up to 64 gigs with the motherboard I selected, but 32 should be adequate. My last computer had 24 gigs, which was more than adequate. I don't think we ever I fully utilized that memory at any given time. I might be wrong. I never checked it when it was really stressed. After memory comes case. Okay. I went back and forth on the case. Cases have changed a lot in six years. I have bought thermal tank cases quite a bit in the past, but they don't seem to be up with the times. Oh, I forgot something completely. Cooling solution for the CPU. Okay. Six years ago when I built this computer, water cooling was first showing up. And I thought about water cooling the PC. I saw videos where people were putting their motherboard processor and everything in an aquarium full of mineral oil with a circulating pump to a radiator. Mineral oil is non-conductive, but carries heat really well. So putting it inside there, you know, there wouldn't be any water on the processor. It works great. You just have a case sealed an aquarium sealed with cables coming out of it and a pump to a radiator and fans on the radiator. Really quiet, really efficient, but it's changed a lot. You can now buy dedicated water cooling units just for the processor, just for the video card. You can buy video cards that already have the water cooling set up on it. You just mount the cooling fan on the back of the case and you got a water cool video card, which is very different from what I'm used to. So before you get the case, you better decide on cooling and you better just make sure that cooling solution fits in the case. Because some of the water-cooled radiators are pretty large. I don't have that part yet. It should be here tomorrow. Okay. And when it gets here, I'm going to review it and show you what I've learned about it as well. Now, the case depended on all these other factors. Do I get a full tower or do we get a mid tower? Well, it depends how many hard drives and peripherals you have. I have two optical drives, one DVD, one Blu-ray, and I have one, two, three, four, four hard drives, okay? That's the one thing I'm carrying over from the old computer to the new one is the optical drives and the hard drives. I'm taking them all out of the old case and putting them all in the new case, okay? Um, because of that, I had to be careful what case I got because the mid-tower cases, some of them are doing away with optical drives altogether. Some of the cases are doing away with hard drive bays altogether. I came across one case that had no hard drive bays. Uh, they had bays for SSDs. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. No hard drives, so they only had SSD bays, which makes a really neat and clean looking case inside. There's no wires everywhere, no drives anywhere. But the problem with that is that I have physical media hard drives, not solid state drives. That's what SSD stands for. I do have one SSD in this computer and one sitting aside downstairs. But so those cases were out of the question. Most mid tower cases only have one optical drive port and I wanted two. My case is sitting here on the floor in front of me. That's why I keep looking down at because I'm looking at it and thinking as I go. It had room for three. Floppy drive spots are gone. Some cases still have them. But most don't. One of the mid tower cases I liked a lot only had three hard drive slots in its hard drive bay. I needed four, so I couldn't get that case. 
So you have to think everything through before you select a case. You could select a case and build the computer around the case, but I don't think a lot of people do that. Okay. Some cases are made out of plastic, some made out of metal. You have to think about the cooling in the case. Because if you're going high end, the thing's basically an expensive space heater. Um, if you stress the computer and it's running stress for an hour or two, like it would for video editing, it can increase the temperature in a room 5, 10 degrees easily because it's pumping out so much heat. Uh, processing is a heat is a byproduct of the processing, the way the processors work. So you have to think about your cooling solution on the case, okay? And how many cooling fans the case has, what the placement is. Do cooling fans come with the case? Yes or no. What accessories come with the case? What cables are you going to need? You need to think through all these things when you go to buy a computer, okay? And I went through all these things. Let me show you most of what I've got so far. I have to get up for a second. The case is not here. It was supposed to be here today. The cooling solution is not here. It was supposed to be here today. Okay? No, it's supposed to be here tomorrow. The case is not here. One, I'm keeping my old, old hard drives. One's a half gig SSD, solid state drive. I didn't go with an M2 solid state drive. The motherboard I purchased does support it. But I'm not going with one of those because that was another $400 and I didn't see the purpose of that. Sure, my computer will literally boot up within seconds of turning it on. But with the solid state drive I have in here, now it's pretty close to that. It's got a pretty quick uh, memory bandwidth. So here's the processor. It's an i7 Skylark. Like I said, it's a 67K, 6700K. You can see it right there. Okay, and it says it's unclocked, unlocked. What that means is the clock is not locked to a certain frequency. It's a four gigahertz frequency on that processor. Sorry, the flinching. I saw. I pushed something. I saw it falling. Nothing's broken though. It's a four K. I mean, a four gigahertz processor. It's unlocked, so you can overclock it. In, I've heard reports of people getting it all the way up to 5 gigahertz with it being stable. When you start overclocking, they can go unstable if you don't have a cooling solution that's good enough, you don't have a motherboard that's good enough, you don't have a power supply that's good enough. It will not reach full potential there. I might overclock it some, but not a lot. The motherboard I've purchased is for overclocking. Okay. Speaking of which, it's on the bottom and it's a heavy beast. I mean, this is a very heavy motherboard. It is a Maximus 7 Hero, okay? Um, this is probably more than I really needed. It's the Republic of Games Edition, okay? This thing is a beast of a motherboard. I showed it to someone a little while ago, and they looked at it and said it looks expensive. We're going to do a full review of this thing. We're going to pull it out, go through all of its specs and everything. It's heavy. This is one of the heaviest motherboards I have ever picked up before. Very heavy. That's because this is a massive heat, heat sink all the way around this thing. Massive heat sink all the way around it. Comes with lots of cables in here. I'm happy for that. I was hoping to replace my SSD cables with some new ones. Okay, header pins. We're going to go through all these accessories in a little bit. I think it came with an, SL, it came with an SLI ca cable. Okay and all sorts of fun stuff in here and again we're going to take some time and go through this and talk about the motherboard and all that stuff i read through the uh, owner's manual on it before i bought it just so everyone knows so there's the motherboard i bought it's for that processor okay so let me put this aside now memory dd4 DDR4 memory. It is a 32 gigabyte kit. It is Basilix two sticks. I went with two sticks instead of four because if I do decide to go to 64 gigs, I can still do it. Crucial makes this. Crucial has made memory and hard drive for a long time. This probably isn't the best performance memory because I decided to save $60, $70 and get this memory set instead of something else. So this may limit overclocking a little bit. I'll have to check the manuals and find out, okay? Now, 
I've got is four cooling fans because my case didn't come fully populated with fans. These are SP120s. They are not necessary for a case cooling. Well, we should explain what the SP means for static pressure. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's what SP stands for. But these are pressure loaded fans. What now? What all does that mean? Okay, some case fans are just fans. Some are designed to handle a pressure load. These are designed to handle a pressure load. Now, why is that important? That means that it moves the same volume of air, even if it feels some resistance. For a liquid cool system, you have a big radiator like you have on the front of your car. There's a lot of cooling fins there, and if your fans are weak, they can't push the air through those. These are rated for pushing air through cooling radiators on water cool systems. They're also rated for pushing air through hard drive cages. Okay, the hard drive uh, bays have a lot of equipment in them. Hard drives do heat up. They do need to be cooled. So having a good fan in front of your hard drive hard drive bay will help push the air through the hard drive bay. So I got these for that reason. And now the case is coming with some non s non pressure rated fans. Those fans are going to go at the back of the case and the side of the case so that they can move air as well. Now I've read somewhere that you want to build up uh, positive pressure in the case because it helps keep dust out of the case. I'm not, I know you don't want negative pressure in the case because that's going to suck dust into the case, even on the exhaust fan side. So we're going to get it set up and figure out what we're doing. When we get the water cooler gets here and we talk about water cool, we'll talk about push versus pull because there's a lot of that on water coolers. Okay. Video card because this is all I got. Well, I got the power supply here somewhere too. I'm looking for it. I know it's in this room. Okay. I don't see them. Oh, I found the box for it. Here's a video card. It is an EVGA video card. I like EVGA video cards. It is a GTX 1070. Now, it says VR ready. It has 8 gigabytes of DDR, R, GDDR5 memory on it. I'm going to go ahead and open the box right here. Because I want to see what this looks like. I did not get the Founders Edition. It wasn't available. They were sold out and I wasn't going to wait on it. And it was $50 more. And looking at the specs, I didn't see it spec'd out much higher than the one I got. So I don't want to pay $50 for something with a little bit higher specs. We have some nice stickers here. They gave me some nice stickers. Color coordinated stickers. Apparently I got a picture, a poster of something. It's a poster. It's a poster. Arm yourself. That's what that says. Arm yourself. Okay. With EVGA. I don't know why they sent me a promotional poster, but they did. We have the requisite manual. We have the software, display drivers, we have a case badge, it came with a uh, power adapter, and then the beast of a video card. Probably shouldn't open it. We're in Texas, there's high humidity here, it was raining today. I'm not going to static discharge this thing, so I'm not worried about touching it. In a low humidity zone, I would be worried about touching it. It's got plastic protecting it from scratching everywhere. So let me hold it up so everyone can see this thing. It is a beast. It is big. It is heavy. Lots of cooling. I mean, most of this thing is cooling. It almost looks like it's got a water cool solution on it when you look at it from the side because most of the weight of this thing is cooling. Okay. It's going to match the color scheme of the computer. The case is white and black. So this is going to match the color scheme. That, that motherboard doesn't quite so well, but it'll look good in there. Okay, output on this thing, four, v, four HDMI ports. This thing will handle four monitors at once and one DVI. I'm running a two monitor system. They're both D HDMI, so this is going to be fine. Yep, 
Oh, yeah, four HDMI ports. Wow. Well, maybe not. I don't think that one's HDMI. I don't know what that one is, but that's not HDMI. You better have two HDMIs on or I'm going to be upset. Yep, there's two. I don't know what the bottom one is. I'm going to have to read the manual. That one's not HDMI either. Okay, we're going to have to read the manual and find out what those ports are. But there's the beast of the beast of a video card. If I go SLI, I got to get another one. SLI is where you hook two video cards in sequence, and only one of them actually drives the video. The other helps process. So you can double, well, theoretically, double your performance by buying another video card. I've done it before. I probably won't. Not with a six hundred dollar, not 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 six hundred dollars, a four hundred dollar video card. I'm not going to spend that kind of money on buying it again. Okay, because I just don't see the purpose. If if for some reason you get there, I'll do it. But no, I probably won't need to. This computer is going to be a much better computer than what I had. Power supply. Now, I can't actually show you the power supply. I can show you the box for it. It is an EVGA. Now, I used to buy Antec power supplies. I didn't find one this time around. Okay? <clears throat> for some reason, I didn't find one. I know they're still making them because I found Antec cases. And some Antec cases are really nice cases. Just, and they're really good power supplies. I've never had an Antec, well, take it back. I finally had an Antec power supply fail. It was after 10 years of use. 10 years of use, yeah, you know. It's okay for it to fail after 10 years of being used. This is a 1,000 watt power supply. The last one I had was a 800 watt power supply for the six-year-old computer. Power supply. How do you know how big a power supply to get? You just buy the biggest one you can find? No. I bought a thousand watt for this one because I know that video card and processor are going to draw some power. And if I decide to hook a second video card up, I will have the power to do so. I don't need a thousand watt power supply. I could probably get away with an 800. What you can do is you can find the power consumption of all the components, add it together, and buy a power supply based off that. Fans and stuff like that, they don't eat a lot of power. So if I were to look at this fan, uh, yeah, 0.26 amps. Well, that's worthless because amps isn't power. Amp is current. It probably meant 0.26 watts. Yeah, well, that's kind of worthless. They shouldn't say that. But you can sit down, read up on the power consumption of all your components, like your video card should tell you. Okay. Now I know what's on the back of this. What those ports were because it's listed on the back of this. This doesn't say, but I can look it up. I know where to look it up and find the power consumption of the video card. And add them all up. I know the power supply is more than big enough. I got a 1,000 watt one. And it is EVGA. It is their gold series. I got a 1,000 watt one because... The old one was 800 watts, and I thought the power supply had died on it. So I flipped the power supply out, and it wouldn't start. So then I knew it was a processor or motherboard. It shouldn't be the video card. The thing should still post with a bad video card. And it wasn't posting. It was immediately turning itself back off. So that meant something else was wrong. And it wasn't a power spike. Here's a component of a computer I always buy, but a lot of people don't. For my computers... I like to use a battery backup. Yep, $60, $70 surge protector. I had a neighbor's house who got struck by lightning one day and it fried a bunch of stuff in my house when their house got struck. My computer survived and every piece of electronic survived that was plugged into one of those. So I've kept using those from that point on. The power surge has to go through the battery first, and the battery acts as a huge buffer. So it keeps it from destroying your electronics. Okay? 
So I've always used them since that point on. Sometimes they can be fussy. That one there is on its last limbs. It got fussy on me, so I yanked it out of my system and replaced it. But I don't want a $1,000 computer going because of a lightning strike on a house three houses down. So I get those things and plug every computer I own into one, including the ones at work. It's just good practice. Saves you some headache. Well, hang on. I got to get going. I've been on this... Com yeah, I've been on this thing far too much. I need to get to bed. I've got some chores I need to do before I get to bed. I've rambled far too long. This video is probably way too long. I'm going to go through each component and talk about it separately and explain what's going on with it. Explain the numbers and everything on it. I will talk to you guys later.